was about to say, just like everybody else in the country, you know, we feel like we have the best class in FCS football. Uh, I don't think there's one person, one coach that would sit here and say, hate my class, but we do love our class. Uh, we feel really good about uh, what we did here, you know, kind of getting a little bit late start. Recruiting is all about building relationships. Uh, you guys know that. And, you know, the, the more you can build a relationship, the better off it is come signing day. But uh, we're proud of the 13 that we signed. They all signed early this morning. I think we filled a lot of needs. You guys will see on there uh, a lot of DBs and probably people question, you know, why so many DBs. But I think everybody knows we're going to go to a 4-2-5 four, four, defense. And, and so we will play with five DBs every snap. And, and uh, that's, that was our biggest need coming in. And, and we think we filled that really well. Obviously, offensive line. Every year we need to sign three or four. Uh, if you're not good up front both sides of the ball, you won't win football games, especially in this league. And uh, so we think we got three really good ones there. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, <clears throat> our numbers didn't compute to take a defensive lineman or really even a linebacker. But, you know, we made the decision. Uh, we really like Tyler Dressler a lot and, and made the decision that we were going to take a linebacker in this class and then a defensive end. Uh, we really were looking for some speed on the, on the edge there, so we, we made that decision there. And then obviously a quarterback uh, was big in this class. So, uh, so I, you know, we kind of we got a couple wide outs, a quarterback, some lo offensive linemen. So um, running back, probably not the biggest need uh, this year. But, um, you know, we filled most of our needs and, and feel really good about where we are. Hey, Russ, how about talking a, a word or two about uh, Springs? Obviously, good stock. Um, and, and does that factor in how you project the kid? Obviously, Dad played in the NFL, Granddad played in the NFL. Yeah, and you probably remember him, and I remember both of them. But uh, when we had the recruiting weekend, yeah, do you guys know who Sean Spring is? Sean Springs is, and our players looked at me like, you know, who? And then I said, well, then you won't know Ron Springs, and they went, who? And but obviously, as coaches, we we knew who they were, and 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 sometimes that plays a role. Uh, you know, we liked him on film a lot. We actually the the previous staff didn't have him on the board, and we didn't find out about him until uh, Mark Baycoat was hired. And we started, we, you know, every time you hire somebody, well, who you got out there that we might want to look at? And, you know, Mark came up with three names and with Aaron, same thing. And, and uh, Mark said that, um, you know, Samari had been committed to Albany. And uh, he said we probably can get in on him. And, and uh, so we evaluated him, really liked him on film and, and, and offered him. And he came, had a great weekend and took it. Coach, how much of a challenge, kind of generally speaking, <clears throat> was the fact that this is your – First crack at it here at Richmond, you know. Obviously, a lot of things uh, transitioning a, a new staff, and of course, bringing in uh, you know a, a new class of kids is, is a is a, could could be a challenge, I guess. Well, it, it was a big challenge, and, and the reason it's such a big challenge is what I kind of touched upon before is you know you build relationships with people, and we spent you know we spent nine months building relationships with guys that we were going to recruit at Chattanooga, and and. And then you come to Richmond, and and you kind of, the the previous staff had all built relationships, and then they leave, and now you're you're at ground zero again. But fortunately, we hung on to uh, a couple of the guys um, that were previously committed that we liked a lot, and both of them were DBs. Marcus Vincent um, is an excellent player, and and he was actually offered by UConn about a week and a half ago, and hung in there with us. Awful proud of him, and I can't wait to hug his neck, uh, you know, for hanging in there because it's hard. I mean, you can say all you want, but, you know, when, when, when you know, one of those big places offer you, you know, sometimes it's hard to turn down, and, and uh, he hung in there with us. And then Noah Nicholson was another one that uh, when we evaluated the, their uh, commitments, we really liked a whole lot, and, and I think he'll be an excellent player for us. How – how do you look at the 804 uh, as uh, the Richmond area just as a recruiting base? Because I noticed there aren't any kids from this area that are on this specific list, and I wonder if that's more of a function of you being new here or if uh, they just didn't have what you needed here. 
Well, when we when we got here, there was only one on really one on the list um, that had that had committed and that they had on the board, and and we eva we went back and evaluated some Richmond players, and you know some of them were already committed uh, to other places that we couldn't, you know, you can't sway, but. Uh, Richmond is going to be a priority for us. There's no question about it. I think there's some some great coaches here in the Richmond area, guys that I know really, really well that have done a great job that that were coaching here in the area when I was coaching here. Uh, it is going to be a huge emphasis for us. We're going to put uh, two coaches um, uh, in the city of Richmond, one on the north, one on the south, and it'll be Dave Leg and. Um, um, can't remember, but we just talked about recruiting areas. So it, that's how important it is. We're going to put two coaches in this city. So it, yes, it is huge for us. I guess it just had more to do with you being uh, new on the scene here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them were gobbled up uh, already. Uh, you know, a lot of them had you know other things going, and and we evaluated some other guys that 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 at this point in time really didn't fit what we were looking for either offensively or defensively or had or had other guys you know on the board there but uh yeah i mean it, it's the, it's we're going to start in richmond and then move out given jeff's background <clears throat> the quarterback do sign story i mean dual threat is that where the spiders are going well no not necessarily um you know, we got we got two guys in our program right now that can sling it, so we better be throwing it around next year. Um, so we'll adapt to what we have personnel wise. You know, three years from now, if if he's our guy, then yeah, maybe it's more quarterback run stuff. But for right now, you know, when you the two guys we got and you guys have seen them, they can sling it. We've got some great wide receivers. Uh, we'd be stupid just to say we're gonna we're gonna try to pigeonhole our offense into what you know into what we feel like's best for us as coaches and not what's best for what we have so uh, no we're gonna we're gonna throw it um but again we want athletic guys and you know i watch those guys on on, on film and and they can escape and they can run pretty well I, i've been i was really surprised to watch kyle and, and both and kevin run um they they can run but they're not going to run the ball um more than seven or eight times a game max and it'll be quarterback draw stuff and in zone some zone read stuff but um you know we're gonna hand it to our backs get it out to our wideouts quickly and then and then throw the football probably this year but three years from now maybe maybe trays but we think he's a good enough thrower we, we don't we don't sign him unless we think they can throw <clears throat> uh when you were here last time Dave Clawson and, and his staff had a great deal of success going south uh, is that sort of the stamp with this class too? It looks like more guys from south of here than north of here. Well, that, that it's more this year, and just because of the people that we knew and the connections that we had coming here. There's no. Um, I've already told our staff that Northern Virginia, Virginia is going to be important to us. Uh, uh, Western Pennsylvania or Eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Um, Baltimore, D.C., I think those areas probably are the best footprint for the University of Richmond. Uh, so, yes, we're going to have a coach in Georgia. Uh, Adam Ross will recruit down there, and, and hopefully we get one, two a year. Uh, you know, we're going to spend send Sparky to Tennessee and maybe go into private schools and get one, maybe two. But the bulk of our recruiting needs to be in Virginia, no question about that. I think it's great football. And then kind of what what happens, John, is is all of a sudden you get in on a kid down there and and they're a really good student and, and, and they kind of look at their GPS and 10 hours, 8 hours, and it's easy for them to say, I'll just take Furman or I'll just take Walford. You know, it's three hours away. And – you know, I think it's a special place, and, and I believe it's a better place. But you know, when you know it gets it gets hard. I mean, we we had a few of them down there that just kind of we brought in, and and they loved it. And when it's all said and done, they kind of just uh, I don't know about the distance. 
but we've had a lot of success. I mean, you, you're talking about going back to a bunch of ways back. Eric uh, Eric Ward and and uh, uh, shoot the DB uh, out of Wall. I remember him. Well, he's from Louisiana, yeah, but I'm just talking about even in the Atlanta area, we've had unbelievable success, and we're going to try to get, you know, players from down there, no question. Hey, do you feel real strongly about redshirting a whole group, or you don't have a firm feel about that? We are going to redshirt everybody possible we can redshirt. Um, I think it's important uh, to build depth, to, uh, to, to, to make it to where you're getting – fourth and fifth year seniors. And I, and I said this, and I looked at the 2008 media guide leading up to that national championship, that, na that national championship year, every single solitary guy on that roster was redshirted except for one, and that was Josh Vaughn. And, um, you know, our roster right now is a little top-heavy because we they haven't redshirted a whole lot. They've played a lot of true freshmen. And there's nothing wrong. I mean, Rocco's a great football coach. Danny Rocco's a great football coach, and they've recruited excellent players here. I mean, this, we got some really good players. There's no question about that. I thought they did an unbelievable job. If I ever thought there was one thing that, that, that – that is my philosophy is way different is the red shirting aspect of it. He just played, he just played a lot of freshmen and, uh, you know, it's showing up kind of in a sophomore red shirt freshman classes right now. It's showing up and uh, because we do have so many juniors and seniors, it, it's pretty top heavy there, but that's a good thing. We got good players for the next couple of years for sure. And we'll, we'll, we'll have a bunch of players. We'll continue to win every year. Coach, you mentioned, Richmond being a special place when you're selling Richmond to, to pr prospective student athletes. The fact that you were here once and then came back again, was that kind of part of, par part of the pitch maybe that you left, you left a special situation in Chattanooga to come, to, to come on back? Yeah, I mean, obviously coming in the first year, that was one of the pitches that we made. You know, when you leave, when you leave a really good place, the, the place you're going to, if you're not getting fired there, is probably a better place. And, and whether people think it is or not, um, my personal opinion is that, that uh, I wanted to come back to Richmond and, and, and it was a great place. So we did sell that, no question. Um, but, you know, this place does sell itself. But the bottom line is <clears throat> you just can't say, we're Richmond, hold out your hands and welcome them in. I mean, you got to recruit them. You got to build relationships. And because there's a lot of other good schools we're competing against uh, that, that have quality educations too, that you got to ultimately, you got to win that battle. And I think it's, it's, it's by how you build relationships, no question. Um, this is the end of the recruiting class, right? You've signed all, all, you, all the spots you have left open? No, we got some spots left open. Yeah, we we had planned on signing a, a couple more, um, but we weren't going to reach. I mean, we we if we didn't think they're good enough to play for us, we weren't going to reach to sign other players um, to get to our number. Right now, um, something's going to pop up here. I, I I'm sure it always does, and, and whether we get a transfer to, but we we do have. Um, scholarships available, and we'll we'll fill those spots have you lost down the road. Transfer? What's that? Have you lost any players to transfer? We have not. They're all coming back. Thank goodness. That was a big recruiting sell too. Now I'm telling you, shoot, I I, I was hugging Kyle Letta's neck every day I saw him. Man, I love that kid. Now what a great leader. And some of the some of the I'm telling you, some of the fifth year guys are unbelievable leaders for us. I mean, they're they're great kids. Waller and and Liletta and and all those guys. I mean, they're fantastic guys to be around. So they love each other. We got to We got to kind of get them to love us eventually, which they will. But I think these guys love each other so much that they would not do that to each other, you know, whether I'm a, the biggest idiot in the world coming in here or not. But uh, I think I think they, they think enough about each other. They're going to they're gonna hang in with each other. It almost sounds you, like that's the recruiting class you're most proud of is the one you kept around. No question. I mean, you got you got to keep the good players. And uh, I guarantee none of the guys we sign are better than any of the guys that are going to show up on the field next year. And nothing against these guys. But 
the guys that we got on our roster in the two, in the two deep are pretty good. Uh, so we got to just we got to stay we got to get them healthy first. I mean, it it looks like walking walking wounded out there, but we get them healthy, keep them healthy. We've got good players.